Hi, I really love projects. I love to be involved with uh, people and concepts and practical implications that feel meaningful and significant, that I'm using my energy in a way that is um, enriching the world and bringing me closer into community and also making the most of my gifts, challenging me and, and developing who I am. And I just can't help taking on um, more and more projects that seem to be embodying this. Uh, it's as though every time I start one, I meet more people and find more opportunities to do more. And so um, it's, it's almost become too much to have a lot going on. And at the same time, uh, I recognize the value of doing something in all of these teams because then I become what's known as a network weaver or weaver um, where I'm able to bring information and opportunity and collaboration between all the different groups that I work with. The only trouble then is that management becomes quite tricky. Um, I am however a social permaculture designer and so I designed the system for myself to keep track of everything that I'm working on and to also help me to select projects that are actually filling a need or, um, or filling a space in all of the realms that I feel are worth working in so that I can say that I'm operating totally holistically, that I'm um, not only focusing on the abstract and the global, but I'm also focusing in the very practical and the personal levels, because I believe that these dimensions complement each other. And um, I, I want to make this video to show you the system. So there are three tools that are complementary to one another, which allow me to develop this way of working. And I want to be really clear that um, this is not the way. This is something that I hope inspires you to develop something for yourself to kind of take the themes and patterns and then fill in what works for you according to the way that you see the world, the way you see yourself and what you hope to gain. So um, it really begins with the, the pattern of quadrants, the cycle, uh, which we can see in the phases of the moon and in uh, the four seasons of the year in the, those parts of the world that have four seasons um, and the four directions as well as the four elements, or if you want to include the fifth element of ether, that would be the center. Um, this is one example, which is the medicine wheel tool. Uh, you also see this in a lot of different um, frameworks. There's integral theory has kind of worked with these four stages um, from integrating other myths that are all based on quadrants. I use dragon dreaming, which is also um, represented in these. So something to notice about the wheel is not just the four spaces or the wheel around it, but also these polarities. Um, and I started to work with archetypes within this that I describe in the feminine because I have a female body and identify as um, female plus or beyond female. Um, and I've really been starting to work back in with my feminine elements. So I see this um, archetype. Well, actually the way that I would start is with a polarity on the top. So I see that each extremity has an archetype and every quadrant is a phase. That gives me eight different archetypes to work with in my personal self. Um, the medicine wheel would put in the very north, the mind and the element of air. And then in the east, you have fire as the element. And this is uh, the, the part of the body is of the spirit. So it's the creativity. The stage between these two is what I would call the stage of life of childhood. So that's a, a third archetype. Then in the south, where we have water as the element, this stage is uh, the archetype of, well, using emotions. That's the part of the body. 
the archetype would be a warrior and i realize i haven't said but in the north i see as a kind of guardian like for me it's angel the angel the protector um and then in in the east is the goddess and so uh, the goddess is this kind of totally divine in her muse element, very creative. Um, and from the goddess to the warrior is the phase that I call the lover. So from the south where the emotions are uh, located, we come to the west element of earth. And this earth being, I identify with the witch, the shaman. And uh, this phase of life between the warrior and the shaman is for motherhood. And then we have grandmotherhood taking us from this witch shaman unto the angel, this purification process. And so uh, as Bill Plotkin would say in his model that on the west is the, the doorway down to soul. And then you have spirit on the east component. component. So finding eight archetypes in myself i also navigated how each of my archetypes might be serving at a different dimension of my being so that takes me to the second tool which is zones in permaculture i'll go on this side now because of the way the book is in permaculture we talk about zones uh in terms of you know, how regularly you're going to be into a place and a, a part of your landscape. So you would design the things that need the most maintenance are closest to you because you spend the most time there. Um, so it starts inside us, at least in most models that I've seen in, in my permaculture course, uh, and then into our house and the kitchen garden where you get like greens things that you use every day the next zone zone two might have your annual vegetables and then you start to have perennials um animals if you keep animals and then the wilderness right at the end so the wilderness is the place that we go to learn it's our greatest teacher and in this model i actually found that i'm operating in eight zones right from my inner being my core where i have um creative projects poetry music um and also discipline like aikido yoga meditation and then my household outside of my household is my neighborhood um i live in suramam and so i considered oh i don't have a project in my neighborhood how can i apply one of my projects into that level otherwise am i really acting local and these scales go all the way out to the world where I have globally ambitious projects. So I started to assign what kind of state of mind do I need to be in in order to do these projects. Now, the very spiritual one can take my child, my goddess, you know, this, ra this realm, this range of who I am. But I feel like I'm a mother when I'm in my household because I cook food for also my flatmate. And so this, um, this is one way to really work through all the dimensions of my being and show up in a holistic way into all the projects that I have, all of these ambitions, and really assign one to each stage. Um, it also helped me to connect to the lesser considered um, zones from local to global, such as the bioregional, so well there's the city of stockholm and then there's the bioregion of the baltics um the nordics and europe so all of these different realms might uh influence the projects that i would take on so that they are more relevant to me and um one of my favorite questions to get asked from people who are um maybe trained through a conventional, traditional, um, institutional way is, uh, so what do you do? And you can imagine that with so many projects going on and so many parts of my being that I'm attempting to nurture simultaneously, um, it's a bit difficult to answer that question. And I also don't like to be stigmatized as, um, oh, you know, she's delusional, she's saving the world. I don't think I'm saving the world. Uh, I don't have that intentional, um, that intention. And 
if I'm delusional, then um, I'm enjoying the process. <laughs> so maybe that's right. But in any case, I like to give someone the opportunity to um, experience the world through my eyes when they ask that question. So one particular night when I was feeling the influence of um, how the difficulty to answer this actually caused a bit of social anxiety on my less healthy days, I realized that um, it would have, again, a permaculture principle, greatest possible effects with the most minimal um, energy or input. And for that, I developed this game. Now, I didn't create this origami. This is a pattern that a lot of us know from childhood. But I filled this in with uh, my archetypes. So rather than a color, um, I've got the elements here fire, water, earth, and air. And if someone asks me what I do, I ask them if they want to play this game. So let's say they pick earth. I would say E-A-R-T-H. And we toggle between work and play. Now it doesn't really matter which one they land on in the end. I mean, there's a work and a play for all of them. But then because you notice that there are eight flaps inside, I've been able to investigate what is the play aspect of my fire side? What is the work aspect of my fire side? And so on for every element. Um, and if someone were to ask me, they, they're going to get one answer. And they know that's not the whole story. And they also know that I'm playful and creative. So it indicates a lot more without having to explain it all. Uh, and it's quite a participatory and inviting way to address this sometimes complex question. So I hope that this has brought some inspiration into how you might want to navigate the complexity of being perhaps someone like me who likes to say yes more than they say no when they see beautiful opportunities to do great work in the world and to grow community and themselves. Um, and if not, if you're not someone like that, perhaps you have another need to manage all of the aspects in your life and just take care of all those elements of yourself that can go on neglected if we tend to focus on one element of ourselves rather than another. So uh, I hope you enjoyed and feel free to spread this around to anyone you want. It's a totally open source contribution and design to the world. I just like to see that people are benefiting from it. Cool. Ciao for now.